Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fugits Blitz. Now this is going to be a different kind of a video. Normally I would review each tank individually but I'm not going to do that because that's like a lot of videos and you know you see one review of one tank you've seen them all. But we've got a new line amongst other things and after the debacle of update 5.5, update, update 8 isn't actually that bad. You serious? Indeed, you're seeing some gameplay here of the tier 7, the M7 Yo, which a lot of people have said is a bit meh. But you know what? I actually like it, despite the fact it's got one heck of a head. I mean, that turret is just massive. But as a tank, it's not too bad. A lot of people have said, oh, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit, eh, uh, it's a bit way. But you know what? I'm actually liking it. I do like the tier 7. And it's all about where you stick it. Okay, it's got a big head, but it's got some pretty decent armor. And it hasn't got really that bad of gun depression. Mobility wise, well, it's a heavy, so it's slow, it's clunky, and it's cumbersome. But I like it. And I actually think it's a really great introduction to this new American heavy line. I mean, I went out in quite a few battles. And okay, it's got its upsides and it's got its downsides. But boy, it's a fun tank. It really, really is. And as an introductory to the line at tier 7, okay, you're going to meet tier 6s and you're going to meet tier 8s. And you know what? doesn't really struggle with many of them. Okay, some of them it does like. I mean, if you do the M6 experimental, it's finding that difficult to penetrate, even with its premium ammunition. But then again, most tanks find the M6 Experimental frontally difficult to penetrate. The thing about this tank, don't go yolloing in with it, guys. If you go yolloing in, then it's just going to cause you a world of pain. Because the bottom hull isn't exactly that tough. The turret, yeah, you'll get some bounces off it. It's got a pretty long reload, as you can see. And I'm playing it with, like now, the, the, the top gun here. It does have a pretty long reload. But as a tank, as a tier 7 tank, I think it's very nice. I mean, you can see that. I mean, I'm not struggling to pen that other tier 7 yo over there. I mean, I like it. Now, a lot of people, as I said, are detractors. They're saying they don't like it. It's not a great tank. It's not fun. It's the worst in the line. I don't agree. I actually think it's quite nice. Hear you nothing that I say. Okay, I agree it's not for everybody, but as I keep saying, it is the introductory tank. And as the introductory tank, it is quite a nice tank. It brings you to the line, it gets you used to its longish reload, its pretty, pretty poor mobility. I mean, it is not a mobile tank. And it introduces you to the fact that it's got pretty weak armor on the hull and you've got to use that gun effectively. Once you do that, you're gonna have some great fun in it, guys. Next, we have the M3, yo, the tier eight tank. How, why it's called a three and not an eight is beyond me. The last one was called a seven, but you know, this is just the way it works. And again, this is quite a funky tank. I like it! So now we're starting to get a little bit of a better vibe with this line of tanks. With this one, I mean, it's good haul down again. It's got a pretty decent gun, don't get me wrong. And it is an auto loader. You got three shots in that clip with the top gun. And boy, does it dish out some pain and suffering. It really, really does. Again, though, none of these tanks are OP. They're not. They are not OP and they're not broken. I thought my jokes were bad. Now, don't get me wrong, they are powerful, but powerful and OP and broken are completely different things. And they're only powerful in the right hands, and they're only powerful if you stick them in the right place. And as you see here, I mean, if tanks are going to come out at me like that, I'm going to smack them every day and twice on Sundays. I can do this all day. That's just the way it works. It's still got a big head, it really has. I mean, it's got a lot of forehead. But... It's got a great gun. It's got a pretty decent reload for, a, for an auto reloader. It's got pretty decent armor. Okay, the hull is a little bit meh still. But, I mean, look at this. I mean, what a snapshot that was. I like these tanks. And you get to the tier eight tank 
and everything starts to gel. Everything starts to come up millhouse, as they say in The Simpsons. I really do like it, guys, and you can have a lot of fun in this thing. Unlike the Tier 7, this one's got a little bit better mobility. However, if you lose your driver, you can kiss goodbye to that, as I found out in one game. I lost the driver, I'd already used my repair kit, and it was unbelievable. It was like a snail towing another snail. But it's a really, really funky tank yet again. Now, with it being Tier 8, you're going to come across Tier 9s, as well as Tier 7s, as well as obviously Tier 8. But this tank doesn't really struggle. Not, not really. I mean, it's got pretty decent gun, as I say. I mean, you will not struggle to realistically pan as long as you aim it in the right place, which is like what you're meant to do with most tanks, to be fair. But I had a lot of fun in this thing. And you know what? For once, seriously, for once, these are great introductory tanks that Wargaming have issued. And I'm not even talking about the rendering now. I mean, the rendering that they've given us is absolutely fantastic. And whilst this doesn't rectify the arm that was done in 5.5, it is a bloody good update. <laughs> Now, of course, there are going to be some detractors out there. Some people are going to turn around and say, ah, it's a horrible update, it's rubbish. But you know what? This is one of the first updates where they've done something really major, like introduced a new line and introduced enhanced graphics with these new track renders. And you know what? The servers didn't crash. It had a little bit of lag, but not that much. Not as much as I normally have within the week after the update comes out. So that impressed me quite a little bit. Well done, Wargaming. Now, the thing I enjoyed about these tanks is that they are, realistically, the Tier 7 and the Tier 8 are noob-friendly. They are. They're not overly complex tanks. Changes a little bit when you start getting up the tiers, but for Tiers 7 and 8, they really are noob-friendly. All you got to do is make sure you stick them in the right place, you don't over-push, and you're going to have a barrel of fun and as i said i mean with this tier 8 you're not going to struggle to penetrate those tier 9s i mean here's a tier 9 right here and i'm not going to struggle to pen him believe me and i really did enjoy rolling out in this thing and we then move on to the tier 9 the m5 yo which let's be honest is a very very bizarre looking tank you're so ugly you could be a modern art masterpiece and this is where the line starts to become slightly less noob friendly and a lot trickier. Because whilst it looks like it's got really good armor and it looks like that turret is pencil thin. Actually, it doesn't look like it's pencil thin. It is pencil thin. This thing does struggle with its armor. It has not got the best armor profile. Come on, let's be honest. Not only that, I mean, the gun is good. But it does have a very long reload when you've got the top gun in. And if you're in the wrong place with no support, you're really going to feel that suffering and that pain. Because anybody rushing you whilst you're in your reload, they're going to find it very easy to pen you. And you're going to have a bad day in this thing. So you've got to move from place to place. You can't YOLO in it. You certainly can't stick it massively on the front line. You've got to hold back slightly. But once you get used to its little quirks, boy, you can have some fun in this thing. I mean, I had a whale of a time in it. We had some good games, we had some mediocre games, we had some terrible games. But once you get used to the damn thing, it's bloody good fun. And when the opposition come rushing at you and yolloing like this, it's even more fun. Trust me, it's a fantastic tank, despite the fact it's bizarre and darn right ugly looking. And you didn't disappoint. But in fairness, it really didn't disappoint. It was a great tank and I enjoyed rolling out in it. I played a lot of games in it. But as I said, this one now is moving away from the slightly noob friendly. You're going to be facing up against tier 10s and tier 8s. Tier 8s it isn't going to have a problem with. Tier 10s it doesn't really have a problem with either. But you've got to be really careful. Because, as I said, you are going to be penned pretty easily. And with that longish interclip reload, once your magazine is empty, boy, you are very, very vulnerable and incredibly exposed. But 
again, this thing really does dish out the pain. Okay, sometimes the shots go a little bit wild because the dispersion isn't the fantastic dispersion that you would think. However, you play this like a second line support heavy, realistically, more like, I don't know, a 50B or a T57 heavy, you are going to have a whale of a time in it. It is a situational tank, don't get me wrong. You can't just roll out and pretend that you are in some kind of super duper heavy tank because you're not in some kind of super duper heavy tank. You're in a lightly armored heavy tank. That is but ugly. However, you can still have fantastic and oodles of fun in this thing. I know I did. I loved playing these tanks. And I haven't even got to the tier 10 yet. I mean, this thing, these lines are fantastic. They really, really are. And I think it's a great, great addition to the game. Not only that, and again, I haven't touched on the rendering, but these enhanced graphics with the way that the tracks are working, etc., etc. It's just beautiful, guys. It really, really is. So without any further ado, let's get to that tier 10 tank. The M6 Yo, and here I am rolling out of it. This is with the two gun. Now, I tested this thing, and you know what? Boy, the two gun was fun. But I also like the three gun now. I also got the funky dunky special camo, as you can see. A lot of people are pretty miffed about that because they haven't got the pop up. But what do I think about this tank? Well, I think it is fantastic. Again, this is not a noob-friendly tank. And if you've got the two-gun, uh, sorry, the two-clip two-gun, what am I talking about? That would make it super-duper broken, but it hasn't got a two-gun. It's not an annihilator masquerading in sheep's clothing. No, this is an American heavy tank at tier 10. This is the two-clip. And if you've got the two-clip, boy, does it really dish out some pain. It's got, you know, an intra-clip. It's not too bad. Overall reload, well, it can be a bit of a pain, but it does dish out a shed load of damage, guys. I mean, you're talking about just shy of a thousand with this magazine. And, you know, I love this tank. I loved it when I tested it. They have nerfed it since the test. Oh, I do. A, well, nice move here. I'm trying to protect the Brigetto because he's got a better reload than me. And he can finish off that yo, whereas I can't because I'm still reloading, as you can see. I like this tank. I think it's great. I think it's got good armor. I think it's a very balanced tank. It's got a good gun, be it the two clip or be it the three clip. I like it. And again, it's not exactly mega fast, but it'll get you around the battlefield. And it's got pretty good dispersion. I mean, look at this. Boom. And shall we do boom again? Boom again. Why not? I like it, guys. Again, this is not an overly noob friendly tank. You've got to really play it for what it is, and it's pretty much the same vein as the AMX 50B and or the T57 Heavy. It's not going to get you in and out of trouble like a Kranwagen because it doesn't have that auto loading magazine. It's not an auto reloader, and it doesn't have that really, really funky armor on the front of its turret. But it does have pretty good armor. I will not kid you. And you saw me there dispatching a very good friend of mine, Wet Sock Fetish from the Clan Vibes, who really gave me a hard time. In fact, he did over 5k damage in that game, and he lost. Bless him. Whereas I did less than 5k damage and got a first class. Bless me. What is it I like about this tank? Well, the gun. This is the three clip, and boy, is it good fun. Yeah, okay, the two clip dishes out fun as well, but oh, I do like this. When I tested it, wasn't keen, but since they've changed it, oh, ho, ho, it's a big gun. Big, by the big boom. And it's just beautiful. It's like having fluffy kittens that have got machine guns. I mean, it is a fantastic tank, guys. And the rendering is brilliant and fair play to wargaming, you know. These, this line is just fantastic. Now I know there's some distractors out there because of the track thing but you know what i don't care because this tank is just you're just too much fun and i really mean that i mean this is so much fun i had oodles oodles of fun in this thing last night i mean 
I just think it's a beautiful tank. It's not broken, it's not OP, it's strong, it's powerful, but only if you put it in the right place. You stick it in the wrong place, it is weak as, I don't know, something that's weak. I love this tank, I love this line, I think this is what we have been waiting for. I mean, don't get me wrong, the American heavies up to now have been a bit okay. I mean, the E5, everybody knows it's ammo rack problem, but it's not really a heavy heavy. It's a good tank, it's a beautiful tank, but it's not a heavy heavy. These are heavy tanks, guys. And aside from things like the M6 Experimental, these are what we needed. And you see there, I've got a mastery. So what's my conclusion? My conclusion is, as much as we'll never, ever, ever overturn the debacle that is 5.5, <laughs> this is truly one of the best updates that Wargaming have actually brought us. They've brought us something that works. They've brought us something that is unique. They've brought us something that looks fantastic, feels fantastic, and plays like a dream. Is it what we wanted? I don't know. I don't think it is, but what is it we want? You know, I have one simple request, and that is to have sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. Well, of course, that's never gonna happen. Well, it may do. Could be a new event tank. The shark with a freaking laser beam attached to its head. Look, guys, I'm joking, obviously. But the thing is, this is really one of the best lines they've introduced. Don't get me wrong, I love the Swedish Chevys, but this changes it slightly. This is so much fun. I love playing these tanks. I'm going to love playing these tanks. Will they be used in tournaments? Well, I don't know. Maybe that tier, that tier 10 may make a showing in tournaments, especially with its uh, profile. I mean, because it is a good tank. Can we really turn around and say that Wargaming got something right? I think we can. I think finally Wargaming have given the community something they actually really, really can get their head into and they can embrace it and have so much fun. Are you serious? Anyway, that's been my quick review on Update 8 and the Tier 10 American Heavies. I've been Fujit. By all means, comment and everything below. And until the next time, stay safe up there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because that is what it's all about, guys having fun and being happy.